In this Lesson 6 video, we're going to install Windows 10 as a virtual machine and join it to our Server 2016 Active Directory domain. This will allow us to use Windows 10 Server to manage our domains, check group policies, and learn more about Active Directory. I also suggest the additional videos of Windows 8.1 and Windows 7 installations so that you have a complete array of clients to deal with. Now that we have our two Active Directory domain controllers up and running, I have them turned off right now, we need to create some client virtual machines so that we can start working with group policy, Active Directory, start manipulating those client machines so that users are both secure in their environment, making sure that they have the ability to access and do things that their jobs require, but also make sure that they can't do things that we don't necessarily need them doing on private production machines that belong to companies. So what we'll do is we'll come up here, we'll do new virtual machine, and I'll walk you through the virtual machine wizard real quick. I'm not going to do this as quickly because we've spent some time here. So I'm going to call this first machine MIIM DSK for desktop 0001. So I can have 9,999 desktops. And I am going to put that this is going to be a Win 10 uh, Pro machine just for my lab environment. Now, normally this is you know too long. Um, so I'm going to concatenate that just to the server name, something that, I mean, uh, desktop name that would identify the computer. So uh, store, I'm going to just store in my default location. This is going to be a generation two. I'm going to go ahead and just give it a gig's worth of uh, RAM. Let it use dynamic memory. Actually, you know what? I'll say 2048, but I'll let it, let it dynamically allocate that memory this time around. I am going to go ahead and connect it right now to the external switch uh, just so I can get the updates. And then what we'll do in the configuration is we'll make sure that we instantiate it to the private network, initially give it an IP address. We don't have DHCP on our private network. We'll give it a static address. We'll um, join it to the domain, each of these clients, and we'll move forward uh, in then creating a DHCP as, as our first lab. So install an operating system. Yes, I have one of those that I want to install. It's right out here. I'm going to go to Windows 10. I guess it's Enterprise for education. I'll grab that and I will install it. <laughs> go ahead and finish. There's the Win 10 machine right there. Go ahead and fire it up. The enter key. It'll initialize the install. I'll say next. Install now. I'll go ahead and pause while I put in my key and then go to the next screen. So with my key successfully in, I'll go ahead and accept the license term. I'm going to do a custom install to that 60 gig. Again, that's a dynamically expanding disk, so I'm not leveraging 60 full gigs on my computer. It'll copy the files. I'll go ahead and pause while it does this. So once it's installed, it'll go ahead and restart so it can complete the installation. Go ahead and pause again. So we'll proceed with the install. I'll go ahead and say use express settings. Now we'll come back in and you know we can give it a username. Of course, administrator is already going to be taken. Um, I'll just go ahead and put in my name. I'll enter a password. I'm using a pass, pass phrase. Just a reminder. And it'll complete. Now, depending on your version of Windows, it might ask you to go in live account. Remember, you can go down to the bottom and choose to uh, configure a local account over a Windows Live login account. So just a little FYI there. Go 
ahead and pause while it continues. So now that the computer's up and running, I'm going to go ahead and do a couple things. Then we're going to shut down the computer because remember, we need to put this computer on the private switch network as well. But real quick, while I'm in, I'm going to go ahead and say rename. And notice rename your PC or join a domain. Now, I can't yet join the domain, but I am going to go ahead and rename the PC. I'm going to rename the PC MIMDSK0001 dash, and we call this Win10 Pro. Okay, so I'll choose next. And this is a perfect time to restart. Now, now remember to install all the updates to the machine at some point. I'll go ahead and pause while it restarts. The other thing I like to do, and I think I've already done it, but I want to show you how to do this, is I'm going to want to go ahead and allow this machine to be managed uh, remotely so that I can use my remote desktop connection wizard. So if I come in here and go to remote, start typing remote, you'll notice allow remote access to the computer. So if you notice, I've changed this to allow remote connections to this computer, so that's good. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and shut down the machine. So I'll simply right click and power off the machine. Being a little finicky. With the machine powered off, I'm going to come back into Hyper-V and add that virtual switch to so that the Windows 10 machine can be on my network. So with the machine off, I'll just simply right click, choose settings. I'm going to add hardware. We've done this before. I'm going to add a network adapter, say add, and choose the private switch adapter. So at this point, I'll say OK. I'll see that the adapter is applied. I can double click, start back up the computer. In my case, I'm going to actually open up the computer in Remote Desktop Connection Manager. Actually, since we're here, we'll just finish this up, this one up while we're here. So the next thing we need to do is actually go into the uh, Network Connection Center or someplace that I can get to the Ethernet adapters. I'll see those Ethernet adapters. If you remember, in the previous machines, we went ahead and rename them so we knew which was which. So we'll do that real quick. Change adapter settings. So this one right here is most likely, you can double check through that previous uh, video if you'd like, is most likely the external switch, the V external switch connecting to the internet. So I'll go ahead and right click and rename that one. V switch external, just so I can keep track of it. I'll come over here, I'll right click and I'll rename this one. This one is the private switch. And while we're in here, we're gonna go ahead and give this one a static IP. Now remember, we don't have a DHCP server on this private network. So in order to join it to the domain, I've got to give it a static IP address. So I'll come in here. And we used a 172.16.0. I'm going to use a 100. Get that to work. We used a 255.255.248 subnet. The default gateway we put in is 172.16.0.1. And then here's the key, those DNS servers. Remember, we made 172.16.0.10, which was our first domain controller, and 172.16.0.11, which was our second. So as soon as we're done with that, we can say OK and OK and close that out. And from here, join a Windows 10 machine is really easy. We just come down here and type join and it brings up join a domain. So we'll click on join a domain. We'll change this. There is our computer name, which is fine. We're going to join the domain corp.mim.com. I'll say OK. 
NetBIOS name, it'll shorten it, which is fine. Now, remember this, I have to give the credentials for a domain admin account. So I do have that administrator account. So I'll put that in. I'll say OK. And if we did this successfully, it comes up with welcome to the corp.miim domain. We'll say OK. It's going to ask us to restart the machine. So we'll restart the machine. And while that's restarting, I'll just quickly jump over to one of the domain controllers here. I'll go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. Wait patiently for that to open up. Here's Computers. And there is my MIIM.DSK0001 dash win machine. Now, Again, I'm, I'm not really worried about these computer names in a production environment. This is most likely going to be an MIIM, DSK, uh, something that designates uh, its OS in here in 0001. But right now, this is fine. So there we go. We've installed Windows 10, and we've configured it into the Active Directory domain. Take care.